I have three beautiful children, and I'm torn on who to support. My youngest daughter is here tonight. My oldest son is 18, and he just started trade school this week. Very proud of him. My concern is that illegal immigration is threatening opportunities for my children. I worry that it's taking away jobs from Americans. I'm wondering, what will you do about that? All right, well, it's great. I think I'll stand up and — do you mind if I turn around? Um, thank you, Amber, very much. And you're right. I'll tell you, we have — the people that I'm talking about, they're pouring in at levels never seen before. They're coming in by millions and millions, and a lot of them are taking the jobs for the black population, the Hispanic population, and unions are going to be very badly affected because — and I was talking to some of the union heads who I actually do get along with, but uh, they're very concerned about it because the jobs that are — the people that are coming in are just taken. It, and it's going to start with the black population. African Americans are losing their jobs. And I don't know if you heard the uh, latest statistic that of the jobs that these people created, which is very little, every single job was taken — about 107 percent was taken by illegal immigrants. There's been no job creation from them. The jobs were filled by illegal immigrants. With all of that being said, I want to give you a very positive answer. We're going to win this election. We're going to turn this country around. We're going to become an unbelievable growth country. And your boy is going to have the greatest job. And you, you want to have a lot of choice with jobs. You know, you want them to go up and they get up and they uh, — it's hard to believe I have that <laughs> the way I get treated. But I look — I look forward to every day because we're going to make America great again. So I really do. I look forward to it. That's right. But — but we're going to — we're going to create a lot of jobs. We're going to create — does he want to stay here? Or does he want to go to a different state or anything? Yeah, someplace in the Midwest. But this is a good place to stay, right? Wisconsin. So we'll be creating tremendous jobs for our country. And we're also turning away. You know, we're going to be closing the border, really closing it. By the way, did you see? So Kamala was for defunding the police. She was for open borders. She was for everything that you're not against. I could go through 14 different — she's changed on every single one of them. In fact, I think we should make — see the man in the red hat and the beautiful woman in the red hat says, make America great again. Perhaps we should give Kamala a make America great again hat, right? <laughs> but the problem is, that's not her belief. Her belief is open borders. Her belief, belief is uh, getting rid of Social Security. Her belief is doing all of these plans, like for health insurance, where you have one big government-run mess and if you have private plans, a lot of the people in this room have private plans. They're incredible plans. They worked hard to get those plans, and that's what they want. But with her, she wants to have — it's really a communist type of government. And I just saw her, Telsey, on — she was sitting behind a desk doing this interview. And I said, Dana Bash, you could make yourself big tonight. All you have to do is be fair. I haven't seen the questions, but they gave out a sample. In fact, she's going to be on later on tonight. Uh, with a taped. It was a taped. We're doing it live. Why are we doing it live and she's doing it taped? But — but — That's right. He's real. But she was sitting behind that desk, this massive desk, and she didn't look like a leader to me, I'll be honest. I don't see her negotiating with President Xi of China. I don't see her with Kim Jong-un like we did with Kim Jong-un. So we're going to have to see what happens. I'll tell you what. November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of this country. Mr. President, there are a lot of people who want to feel hopeful about our future. I want to introduce you to Luke, who is one of those people. Hi. Hello, Mr. President. Good-looking guy. Thank you. My name is Luke Pulaski, and I'm a junior here at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. I'll be voting for the first time in November, and I'm researching each candidate. I have two questions for you. First, as I've been living on my own and buying my own gas and groceries, I have noticed that everything has become more expensive. For me personally, 
I try to eat healthy and stay lean. A pound of meat has gone from $4 to almost $7. I also would like to buy a home someday, but that seems just impossible now. What's your plan to make life more affordable and bring down inflation for someone like me? Very good. Thank you. Good. It's probably the question I get most. You know, they say you're going to vote with your stomach. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's a little bit true. And groceries, food has gone up at levels that nobody's ever seen before. We've never seen anything like it, 50, 60, 70 percent. You take a look at bacon and some of these products, and some people don't eat bacon anymore. And uh, we are going to get the energy prices down. When we get energy down, you know, this was caused by their horrible energy wind. They want wind all over the place. But when it doesn't blow, we have a little problem. This was caused by energy. This was really caused by energy and also their unbelievable spending. They're spending us out of, out of wealth, actually. They're taking our wealth away. But it was caused by energy. And what they've done is they started cutting way back. We were in third place. When I left, we were by far in first place, beating Russia, beating Saudi Arabia. And we were going to dominate to a level that we've never seen before. And then we had a bad election. I'll be very nice. I'm supposed to be nice when I talk about the election because everybody's afraid to talk about, oh, please, sir, don't talk about the election, please. You know, if you, can't, if you can't talk about a bad election, you really don't have a democracy if you think about it, right? But, but what they did, Tulsi, is they took, they took back the oil production the oil started going crazy. That started the inflation. Then they went back. They said, go back to where Trump was. The problem is that we would have been three times that level right now. We, are, we would have been so dominant over Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia. Look, Saudi Arabia, Russia, a lot of oil. We would have had more. You know, we had something in Alaska, Anwar, that we, that I created. I mean, Ronald Reagan wanted it. You remember? Ronald Reagan wanted it. They all wanted it. And I got it approved. Nobody was able to get it approved. I got it approved. And they, the first week in office, they turned it back. They said, no, it's the biggest site possibly in the world. Could be bigger than Saudi Arabia. Well, we're going to start that up. We're going to become the energy capital of the world. We're going to pay down our debt, and we're going to reduce your taxes still further. And your groceries are going to come tumbling down, and your interest rates are going to be tumbling down. And then you're going to go out, you're going to buy a beautiful house, okay? You're going to buy a beautiful house. That's called the American dream. The American dream. Thank you. Mr. President, I, I want to ask you a question about national security, but first I think it's important to point out what Luke is talking about, the cost of groceries, the cost of gas, the cost of housing, mortgages, rent, everything has gone up. Kamala Harris's plan that she has announced is government price controls. And I think it's important to touch on, you just laid out your plan. What's going to happen if Kamala Harris institutes price controls? So that's a communist plan. It's never worked. And it's been tried by others. Believe it or not, Richard Nixon tried it. A lot of people tried it. It's been tried many times, and it always leads to the same failure. Uh, tremendous inflation lack of product, you don't have anything, the stores are not stocked, it has never worked. It's called control, they want control. And, uh, you know, look, it just, it's been so often, and everybody that comes in, they say it, it sort of sounds great, we're gonna go price control. Actually, when she announced it, she got absolutely slaughtered by even Democrats because it doesn't work. It's, it's a known loser. So now she doesn't talk about it. Do you notice she doesn't talk about climate change anymore? She's not talking about it. You know why? Because people don't want to hear it. They want to find, they want to live a good life. They want to live a life. They don't want to stop your industry with climate change. They used to call it different things, global warming. Remember, that wasn't working because it was getting a little bit cooler. So they said, what are we going to do? We'll call it global cooling. No. So they came up with the word, words climate change because that takes care of everything. It's climate change. The climate's changing, but according to them, we're all going to be gone in about, what do we have, three years left? They had 12 years, remember? So in about three years, let me tell you, we do have a problem, though. It's climate change, but a different kind of climate change. It's called nuclear global warming. We can say that's global warming. And if we don't have a smart president, you know, you have five nations now with pretty massive 
nuclear power. Some have very massive, including us and Russia. China is behind, way behind, but within four or five years, they'll catch up. And we don't want them to catch up. Look, we, the biggest problem, in my opinion, the biggest problem our country has, the biggest problem the world has, is nuclear weapons. They are a destructive force, the likes of which nobody has ever seen before. And we have to make sure they're never used. We have to make sure it's not going to happen. You're, you're exactly right. You brought up Ronald Reagan already. Ronald Reagan famously said, a nuclear war can never be won and should never be fought. And I think it's interesting you talked about climate change, Mr. President. The Democrats and Kamala Harris, they were quick to talk about how climate change is an existential threat. But what they're not talking about is the existential threat of nuclear war and World War III, which is exactly where we sit today because of the warmongers and their puppets, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And they don't want to talk about it because the, the consequence of where they have taken all of us as the American people and the world is economic hardship around the world, a destruction of our economic well-being, and an annihilation of humanity, our families, our kids, our communities around the world. There was a recent poll that uh, YouGov did that, that pointed out over 60% of Americans feel that World War III and nuclear war is going to happen within five to 10 years. And, and when I heard that, I, I felt so sad because they're at a point where they feel like this outcome, the annihilation of the world, is inevitable. So I, I wanted to ask you about this because it's important that people understand what kind of leadership you bring, what you will do to stop this slide towards nuclear war and World War III so that we can feel hopeful again. Well, thank you. So, Viktor Orban, a very strong leader from Hungary, Prime Minister of Hungary, they asked him recently about what the problem in the world. A few years ago, during my term, we had no pro We didn't have Israel being attacked. We didn't have Russia attacking Ukraine. And they asked him, why is it so bad now? The Middle East is on fire. Uh, so many places are on fire. And there are plenty of uh, places that could very well and very quickly catch on. What's the problem? He said, you have to bring Trump back as President of the United States. You will have no problem. He single-handedly kept things. And it's true. And I could do it with telephone calls by being smart. But literally, he said, you have to bring Trump back. Now, he used a term I wouldn't use. He said everybody was afraid of Trump. You know who was afraid of Trump? They said China was afraid of Trump. Russia was afraid of Trump. They were all — and I don't want to say that. I will say this. They respected me, and they respected our nation. They don't respect our nation anymore. They don't respect our nation anymore. Think of it. What would the world be like? If Russia didn't do what they did, and they would have never done it. I used to speak to Putin about it. I had a very good relationship. Uh, no chance. You know what happened, I think, uh, Afghanistan, when he saw the horrible leadership that we were displayed, that we displayed in Afghanistan, I think he said, wow, this is a time to, to go in. Because I wasn't there. He would have never done it if I was president. 